Great. So I'm Kelly Folletto and welcome to the Grit, Guts and Courage show. And this is the show where we talk to people who have had something happen to them and they needed grit, guts and courage to get through it. So today I have Tammy Rader with me and she has this phenomenal story. I've met her a couple of years ago and she just this beautiful story, uh, soul. And so I wanted to have her on the show to talk about her story. So welcome, Tammy. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So we're not going to go into a whole bunch of introductions. We're just going to get right into it. So please tell me your story of grit, guts, and courage. Uh, my story started January of 2021 when I was uh, coming out of the shower and combing my long, dark hair at the time. And uh, I had brushed over my breast and thought, oh, that, this feels a little weird. So, of course, you do the, the check and I felt a lump. And I thought, no, this is nothing. Like, no one in my family has breast cancer. So why... You know, I just, I've been working so hard. I've been, and after uh, a week, I let it go. And then I went and it was still there. So I went and made the appointments. And after the necessary appointments, mammogram, ultrasound, and then next came the biopsy. I got the phone call in February to say it is breast cancer. And then the, Next phone call was from the surgeon to say, you need to have your breast removed and have a single mastectomy because it had already spread to my lymph nodes. So that was a very, that was a devastating call in and of itself. But then um, just a few weeks later, I got another phone call. <laughs> um and I was told I had rectal cancer. So that just sort of blew my mind. Um, I will just back up for a second. When I was 16, I was diagnosed with endometriosis and IBS. So, you know, over the course of the years, a lot of things happen. Life happens, stress happens, marriage, divorce, babies, <laughs> car accidents, all these things. And then uh, it's the end of 2019, I was not feeling well. And there were, how do I say this appropriately? There were colors coming out of me that shouldn't have been coming out of me. <laughs> and so I went to get checked out. And sure enough, the doctor said, you need to have a colonoscopy and, and see a, a gastroenterologist um, about your uh, bowels and stuff. So the appointment was booked for April of 2020, and I think we can probably all do an eye roll here as to what happened in 2020 and the whole world fell apart. And so that appointment I never got. And there were those that appointment kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And uh, 39 days after I was diagnosed with the breast cancer and just 14 days after I had my first mastectomy, I was told I had rectal cancer. So it's, uh, <laughs> then the journey began actually. <laughs> so a lot of the grit came with the, the treatments, the, um, there was, there ended up total 56 rounds of radiation and nine rounds of chemo for both the rectal and the breast cancer. And um, the grit was was the pain. The grit was the, um, it, it wasn't just about surviving the cancer at that point. It was about surviving the chemo and the radiation and the biopsies and the surgeries and the scans and the emotional breakdowns. It it's all true. It's all, sorry. It's um what they say, you know, the scanxiety and, and all the things that happen, it's the strains on the relationship and so much more. That's, that's the grittiness of it all. And um, it's losing your hair and being away from your family. I was 
3,000 miles away from my family at that point. So having my boyfriend here to help me and support me was awesome. But when you just want a hug from your mom or your son, sorry, <laughs> it's uh, it's hard. It, it was hard during those times. So, yeah. <laughs> I I can't imagine what you went through. I just can't. And, you know, just like when I, you know, tell people that I lost a stillborn baby at 28 weeks and I, I held my dead baby. And, you know, sometimes people with, um, you know, who've had a miscarriage would say to me, well, I know what that's like. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> No, <laughs> you don't you don't know what it's like I actually held my dead baby you you didn't um so I that's why I can't say I understand what what you went through you know I've, I've had pre-cancer of the cervix but I know that's nowhere near what you had to go through and so I admire you because I just think it's incredible how you put yourself out there and you see humor in some of it and you you like you're you're not giving up and it seems like there's some cancer people that actually give up yeah. when, like, because when they hear the c word they think that's a death sentence and so i am just so proud of you because you keep moving forward and you're not giving up right and that's yeah. what I love about you so much is how you're like, I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through. And, you know, I've watched you on Facebook and, you know, you get knocked down and, you know, we got to meet in person in Vegas and, yeah. you know, yeah. And then, you know, it's just like so great to see you. And yeah. So it, I love, I love it. I don't even know what to say to you because you're just... <laughs> you're just so courageous and that's why I wanted you in this book and in this you know in this podcast because you were just so full of grit guts and courage and what would you say to someone who's who just been diagnosed with cancer what would you say the first thing is to breathe take the breaths that you need and just sit and reflect on what you've just heard I know that sounds really bizarre but mine happened so fast and it was, I was told, okay, you have cancer. And then I was told, okay, you have to go have surgery. That first surgery was not my choice, right? The second surgery was almost two years later, but everything happens so incredibly fast. You need to take a step back and just breathe, focus on what you can control instead of what you can't control. That was, that was one of the huge things for me. And then as funny as it sounds or as weird or ridiculous as it sounds, gratitude. Um, gratitude is the attitude in my books that can change everything. And for me, having gratitude was being able to wake up in the mornings, like literally thanking whomever, whatever, wherever, that I was able to wake up because there were some nights that I went to sleep that I honest to God, I didn't know if I was going to wake up the next morning because of some of the things that were going on or how I was feeling or the hospital visits, the, all that kind of stuff. And it's just the resilience and the, and the, my want to live. Like you said, there are others that, that don't. And I, I had the unfortunate circumstances of meeting some of them in in at the Cross Cancer Institute where I had all my treatments and it's it's hard to see and I and I thought to myself every day when I had to go day after day for treatments and it's like I am grateful that I was able to drive myself today. I'm grateful that I'm able to walk in these doors and have my treatments and walk out. I saw people in wheelchairs and on stretchers and there was no light in their eyes anymore. There was no, and, and it's not lost on me, the ones who didn't make or get as far as I am now in my journey. It's not lost on me, the ones that don't 
get to continue and have an amazing life afterwards. Um, but I fought, I wanted to fight. I had the resilience. I had the, the guts <laughs> to share my story and to um, ask for help when I needed it. And that was a huge thing for me. I have been a very strong, independent woman who raised her son, you know, single parent. Um, and you didn't ask for help. If you needed something done, you figured out how to do it and you did it, right? And for me to ask for help uh, during this process, it was it was hard, but it was definitely needed. So if you need to ask for help, or if you need the help, ask for it for sure. So, yeah. I love it. I'm a single mom also. So I relate to that whole, you do everything yourself and it's hard yeah. to ask for help. But I always <laughs> see asking for help. It's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength because yes. you know that you need it. And people want to help, but they don't know what to help with. So that's why they like to be asked so that they know what they can help you with. Yeah, yeah that is so true. Yeah. And and just to touch, to touch on that just for a second, it's just even say, I'm here if you need an ear. I'm here if you need your laundry done. I'm here if you want to just sit on a park bench, if you're able to go out, you know, anything like that. Or I'm just here to sit in silence. And if you just want to cry, just cry. I don't know why I'm really emotional right now. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> well, it is an emotional thing that you're going through. Right? So, yeah. and it seemed like, you know, you're, you're constantly fighting it. And how, how, um, how how are you getting through it? What are you doing to get through this? Well, I always say that my story is a bit of um, laughter or humor and gratitude mixed with a side of cancer. I kind of I kind of think of my body as an Airbnb for the cancer, and I I allowed it to come in, I guess, but I kicked it the hell out. <laughs> and so, laughter, humor, gratitude. I have to. I laugh at myself. I mean, I can trip over the carpet, you know, and 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 I laugh, right? Because it's like, what 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 was that, you know? And um, just being able to laugh at yourself. If you need to sit down and go on YouTube or wherever and watch a bunch of cats and dog videos, or I don't know, babies laughing or anything like that, people falling down, whatever you can do to make yourself laugh, to give you that, it's almost like a break. The laughter gives you a break in, in the moment, in the day, in the hour, whatever you're needing to get you through, right? And, and so laughter and gratitude are the first, are the two things that have gotten me as far as what I've gotten now. Yeah, it's incredible because I know that you are like that. You know, I've seen that on some of your Facebook posts where you're laughing at yourself about silly things and some yeah. people would just get so upset about it but you find the humor in it which I think is amazing because yeah. not a lot of people can see humor in cancer so um no. are you cancer free now I would like to hear those words <laughs> I have not heard those words yet there has been many ups and downs in my journey since I've been done my treatments. Um, they found some nodes on my thyroid and I had to have those biopsied, uh, which was just actually a few weeks ago. Uh, it came back negative. I still have to be tested for Hashimoto's and something. Yes, very excited for that. Yeah. Um, but they also found a polyp on my throat, on my vocal cords. And that's why my voice sounds like this. And uh, so I have to go and have that done, which is an upcoming um, uh, an upcoming appointment. So I have not heard those words yet. I don't believe that there's any cancer in my body. I'm just gonna 
say that um, because that's how I think I've gotten over all the other hurdles by thinking that way. And that's, I believe, what's sort of kept me on the up and up. So I'm I'm going to say that maybe we'll do another podcast when I get those words. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> I love how you say when I get those words. I yes. love that. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um I know that you love to help people and you know you're you're doing some work in that in that in just you know in that area. So what are you doing in your world to help people? Because I know that you're you're such a a giving person that wants to help people. So what are you doing? I, I do. I um I have a new community and it's called Be Beautiful Beyond Your Diagnosis by Tam. So it's B E Y O U T I F U L because I have to be different. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, in that community is other members that obviously have just been diagnosed, are in the middle of their treatments or on the other side of their treatments and trying to figure out, you know, what to do, where to go. Um, Basically, I want to help others that to get through their journey, but I want them to go from being a cancer patient to being you again and I think that's where the beautiful comes in this beautiful community right like beautiful is a celebration of of life no matter where you are in your journey and to me you're beautiful in every moment throughout the highs the lows and everything in between and I guess the way that I'm looking at things is there's still a bright future ahead of your diagnosis no matter what that diagnosis is and I want to be here and I want to help you find it and that's what that's what I'm doing so beautiful beyond your diagnosis by Tam I love it I love it okay so do you have any last words of wisdom that you'd love to share I do first of all attitude is gratitude that it's just plain and simple um you don't how about this? You don't have to have cancer to feel like crap. And you don't always feel like crap when you have cancer. But you do have to have, excuse me, you do have to have the tools and the clarity to move yourself forward. And that's where I come in. (laughs) That's excellent. (laughs) I love it, Tammy. Okay, so how can people connect with you? They can go to my website. So it's beautiful.health. So B-E-Y-O-U-T-I-F-U-L dot health, H-E-A-L-T-H. And all of my stuff is on there. Um, Different ways to get a hold of me, contact me, email, all that stuff. That's excellent. Thank you, Tammy. So that is my story of grit, guts, and courage with Tammy Rader. And we just love her to death. So thank you so much, Tammy, for being on the show. And uh, for those of you who want the book so that you can then hear more stories, uh, reach out to us so that we can get that book to you. So Tammy, thank you again. Love you. Thank you so much, Kelly, for having me. Love you too. Have an awesome day. You too.